All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrew Ferris, and I am the CEO and co-founder of On This Spot, the uh, history walking tour app developer, and uh, also history walking tour and tourism app, I guess is how we call it. So today I'm going to talk about, uh, just give a broad overview of who we are, what we've done in the past, um, and what our you know very talented team, some of our projects that we put together, and and how we've worked with other communities, and how we can work with your community and help develop um, really world class, cutting edge uh, digital uh, history and tourism experiences. And as you see, we don't just do to history anymore, although that remains our bread and butter. So, uh, yes. So an introduction, our offerings. Um, and uh, expanding your reach. So this is kind of showing uh, a lot of how our newer projects are working and how we've kind of, we're, re we're just currently reorganizing our projects to include a lot more different communities, uh, you know, in a single project. And this might be something that might be relevant to you because you might have other nearby communities that can partner, uh, that might want to partner with you and with us to build a wider project that gets a lot more reach, a lot more eyeballs on it. Um, I'll talk a bit about uh, yeah what it's like to work with us, um, how partnerships work, and then I'll leave time for a Q&A. So yeah, just don't hesitate to ask any questions, and um, I will be following along with them as I go along. So who we are and what is our story? So um, yeah, I've always been deeply, deeply passionate about history, and uh, I've always wanted to share that passion with people. Um, after studying history at UVic and working in the oil sands for a few years to pay off my student loans. Um, I started backpacking around the world, um, trying to figure out something I could do to share this passion with people. Uh, so in 2013, I started a travel history blog. Um, and I, I really enjoyed doing that because I found visiting a place and having a tangible connection to the history that occurred there, history that I'd only ever really read about before. Um, in books, um, I found that to be an extremely powerful and rewarding experience. And so I called the blog on this spot. Um, Nagasaki, I guess in particular, was a deeply affecting experience for me. When I was there, I saw that they had put up plaques at the same places where photos have been taken in the immediate aftermath of the dropping of the atomic bomb in August 1945. So easily, easily enough, I took photos of the of the plaques and then uh, superimposed them over photos I took from the same angle uh, today. And as you can see here, this is uh, Urakami Cathedral um, in uh, you know 2013. This is one of the very first that uh, enough photos I took. You can see I, with all the glare, I have a picture of a plaque I took. Um, uh, but yes, and then I combined that with you know writing about just the sort of horrifying experience of seeing what, uh, well, also horrifying and redemptive, I guess, experience of seeing uh, uh, what it was like for the city to, you know, experience an atomic bombing and to recover from it. These, these NNF photos proved like, um, this, these blog, this blog post proved immensely popular. And these NNF photos proved immensely, they reached out to people and they connected with people, especially people who were not typically interested in history. Um, the blog post went viral and I thought that, this would be a really good way to do storytelling as I as I traveled around. Then and now photo photography seemed then, and to some extent still seems today, uh, a greatly underexplored field of photography. Uh, when I was doing then and now later on at Juno Beach in Normandy, um, you know, where Canadian troops stormed ashore, uh, I wanted to find eyewitness accounts of what it was like for the troops landing on the beach that day. Um, I didn't have Wi-Fi or a guidebook, um, and, I, and I didn't have data, <laughs> of course. Uh, I was traveling on a shoestring budget. So, excuse me. So I spent half an hour um, uh, on uh, in the alley behind the Starbucks trying to uh, find a web page uh, that would tell, you know, find some eyewitness accounts of uh, the troops storming ashore that day. And it proved actually surprisingly difficult. So that proved to be, um, for me, that was, well, there should be an app for this. Kind of, that was the moment. Um, I wanted to combine then and now photography with gripping history. And in, in the case of Juno Beach, you know, you could just follow along the individual eyewitness accounts of, of, of individual soldiers as they went from this particular bunker to this bunker and, and literally in their footsteps. Um, yeah, so I basically, I kept doing then and now photography. Um, as you can see, here's me in front of a burning hotel in uh, San Francisco in the early 1900s. Um, I like to superimpose myself uh, 
uh, historic disasters. I think that's kind of fun. And then afterwards, I returned to Canada and partnered with my um, longtime friend and uh, brilliant, brilliant developer, uh, Chris Reed, to build this concept into an app. And so we worked all through, 20, well, for the first six months of 2016, we worked basically around the clock uh, to see uh, what we could do. Um, and uh, that summer, we launched um, the On The Spot app with 600 then and now photo sets and 11 walking tours. Um, and we just wanted to see if people would like it. Um, we just did this on our own initiative and um, people did like it. We quickly got our first partnership in uh, Strathmore, Alberta. Um, we got an enormous amount of press coverage um, and an enormous number of users right off the bat. Since then, we've been partnering with communities uh, to tell their stories um, all across Canada um, and increasingly uh, in other countries around the world. So as you can see here, this is our this is our, this is our basic coverage map since 2016. But our rate of growth has been going from like one city to three cities to you know in 2017 to five in 2018 to, to 10 in 2019. Um, and now we're in 120 communities. Um, we'll be launching a, a there's just a lot more in the pipeline at any given moment. So, uh, we have our first American partner in Coconut Grove in, in Miami, which is an exciting project. We've, we're working on British partnerships um, uh, and uh, we're working also, we have our first Quebec partnership recently, which was a, a big kind of get for us because it's um, uh, a uh, native language French. We, you know, we, we designed the app to be basically native in French. And so, uh, and with this new translation system, now we can put it in any language we want. Um, we partnered with over 100 uh, different or partner organizations. Uh, these generally fall into four, one of four categories. There's um, heritage and museum organizations, and they benefit by partnering with us by getting their message out, uh, you know, making their, they're able to turn their communities basically into a outdoor museum, uh, even places where there is no obvious history uh, left there. We can still reconjure up the past with um, these walking tours with then and now photos and people can walk along and uh, it gives them something to do um, a way to access uh, that that history. Um, we also work with tourism organizations. It's a tool that you can use to market your community um, and get people visiting from neighboring communities. Also because we keep everything in one app and we have 67,000 users last year. Um, all those users uh, have access to all of our different cities and they can we kind of promote them all to them. So it's, um, uh, it's a great way to promote tourism. Um, be, another, another major stream of our uh, partners are BIAs and Chambers of Commerce. Now BIAs, obviously their interest is in getting people walking around and, and visiting local businesses and uh, also identifying with the place more um, uh, so that they want to come back and visit. Uh, these are, you know, and it just ha so happens that most um, uh, historic sh or most shopping streets uh, are in the historic hearts of communities, which means that we we're able to get people out and about walking along those streets. We're able to provide analytics showing exactly how many people walked in front of this particular business or along this street. Um, and so, so uh, though that's our third kind of organization that we partner with. Um, and the fourth is uh, governments, of course, because uh, governments want to see all these things happen. <laughs> and they like to see all these benefits be um, felt across the community and also to get people to feeling, yeah, like more uh, uh, tied to their communities. So, and these were ranged from, you know, very small, uh, small communities such as Gleesh in Alberta, population 300, or like a number of uh, uh, very, very small hamlets uh, that were the sites of internment camps in the First World War, or, or larger communities such as, you know, one of our partners is the city of Edmonton, or um, we have um, many different partners within Toronto and within um, uh, the lower mainland on in British Columbia. So there's a huge variety of different organizations that benefit from the work we do and that we're able to advance all their interests. Uh, so what do we do? Um, aside from you know, what I said was just uh, combining then and now photography with uh, engaging dripping history, uh, we do other things as well. Uh, we have, you know, we listen to our partners. We're a small company um, uh, and we're able to be quite agile and listen and develop new features that are requested by our partners. Um, and so we and so we also do audio walking and driving tours um, these are hands-free driving tours they can accompany you on a drive along a highway and we can tell people when to get out and uh, uh what what they should look at while they're while they're driving to a different location uh 360 virtual tours these are both indoor museum tours or outdoor 
excuse me, outdoor um, ones talking, you know, say doing like trails or um, even drone based ones where we can, uh, you know, put a, a create a virtual tour in the sky above a community or an island or whatever. Uh, and I'll I'll get a bit more to those. Uh, we also make videos now, which is really cool. Um, we're very proud of uh, some of our, our this, this is a big new one we've been doing. We do translation services and hosting. So we have um, on our staff, we have a French and German translators, a Spanish. And um, and we have had some of our content translated into Chinese as well. So we've basically overhauled our app so that we can have all five different uh, five different languages where you can translate into it. Um, and and also we can add in any other languages we want in the future. So now that we have this new platform, um, we're pretty excited about that. And then yes, we provide uh, analytics and digital advertising as well. Uh, we can provide you very fine grained analytics. We do that for all our partners upon request, and we can do advertising for you. We can make uh, you know Facebook posts or. or or you know, do run digital advertising campaigns on your behalf. And also we can do, you know, graphic design for promoting this stuff once you built it. Um, and we don't just host tours that you already have. So if you have, say, like a, a walking tour brochure in your community, we can host that. But what we also do is we develop tours. Um, we have a highly talented team of writers, researchers, photographers, sound engineers, <laughs> videographers, translators, um, and uh, they are here to build uh, phenomenal digital experiences for you and the aim is to make them more comprehensive and 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 extremely uh, valuable i guess for for many years to come um uh, we want it to be evergreen content so that so that uh you know it doesn't have to be updated every every three three like year or so or it's not stranded on some app that, that becomes uh obsolete which is something that seems to happen with quite stunning frequency with uh, many of the partners we've spoken to with uh, other apps that they tried out. So we built these experiences. And I mean, I like to say we are a history company that does technology rather than the other way around, though. Uh, I usually don't say that in front of Chris, as he does absolutely phenomenal work on technology. So this is all the different kinds of content we develop. And I'll just give you some um, more examples. I'm also listening to our partners. Um, we have moved well beyond um, just doing history. Although that remains kind of our bread and butter. And we, I guess, uh, focusing in just before moving on from the history aspect is, is we like to take a, uh, do a comprehensive look at uh, history um, and we footnote everything. We want to make sure it's a powerful educational tool for people, um, one that is available um, also on our website. Uh, so it uh, can be used uh, for you know, school research, uh, for, for kids projects, and also you know, having all of our content online. Some of these tours, um, you know, they're, they're 4,000 to 9,000 words in length. But having all this, so they're not just, you know, pulled from Wikipedia. We we really do our, we try and make something that is will stand out and be a lasting contribution to kind of the, the public public history uh, in whatever community we're doing. But, you know, and we also do design them not to be overwhelming, is we take uh, what we call a skimmer, dipper, diver approach, um, where uh, people can, who are just going through, when they're skimming, they can, uh, they just like to see the pictures. They're with, you know, they're like, oh, something I just need to do while I'm walking around town. Um, you know, I went to the visitor center and they're like, try downloading this app. Um, uh, they can just go through and look at the then and now photos. Um, and I'll show you how that works in a couple demos in just a sec. Um, uh, and then for those who are more interested in the history, uh, you know, say they, they see, wow, that building's interesting or this picture is cool. What does it say? We have, um, uh, for the, these people, we call the dippers and the dippers, we, 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 um, uh, have a caption section, which is a top, top text, you know, it's hierarchically, you know, superior to the rest. Um, it explains what the picture you're looking at is and on one of these then and now photos. And also every stop on a tour has kind of like a wider theme. We like to tie history into wider themes. We don't like it just to be, you know, lists of names and dates and who owned this building when, but we try and make it relevant to people. We're really, really interested in making public history that's relevant and interesting to people. So, so if it, people read that and then they're like, wow, so they read the, the top text, then they can go, you know, further and they can dive into it and read the full body text. Um, and these are the divers, of course. So. So we this allows us to be able to be very comprehensive and and while without alienating um, less engaged users and also just making sure that the history content um, uh, and the content that we create will remain um, uh, effective wherever we go. Um, and I just got a question as well. Um, is someone asked, is there also a web version too, so folks can access the virtual tour anywhere in the world? Um, and yes, yes, we have we host we mirror everything on our website. 
um, uh, and uh, so that, yeah, it can be accessed anywhere. Uh, we obviously try and push people towards the app because it's a better experience. Uh, we have more features in there uh, that I'll just get into. But um, uh, the, yeah, the web, the web version is, um, um, uh, it's all there. <laughs> and we're just overhauling our website right now. It's kind of, uh, it's in need of a reorganization. But anyway, so aside from the history, we also do places of indigenous significance. We're working on a major project with the Sonemo right now. Um, these are the First Nations people of, of the region around Nanaimo. Um, and this is our first major indigenous partnership. And um, uh, so, you know, the then and now photo model doesn't work particularly well for that, um, for, for some a number of reasons. And also our team shouldn't be writing that, right? Because we, it's not our knowledge to be sharing. So we've been recording uh, and creating videos, which I'll get into in a bit. We can also do historic and archaeological sites. So I'm doing one right now, which is a drone-based tour of um, uh, the Bodo archaeological site um, uh, outside Provo, um, Alberta, which is a very cool public archaeology location project working on a um, buffalo kill site uh, that takes back um, uh, I, I believe like 11,000 years. It's, it's remarkable, remarkable place. Um, we can also do historic downtowns and neighborhoods, you know, if you want to do architecture, whatever. Um, we can also just do purely uh, tourist attraction focused ones. Um, we can do, you know, pub tours, winery tours. Um, our, our platform is very versatile, so we can basically develop all this, um, uh, anything that you like. Um, public art is a massive one as well. Uh, we've done a lot of public art tours. Um, these are uh, especially murals, um, and also they're a way to kind of keep the pub, you know, the murals recorded, right? Um, if they get painted over, if they don't want, you know, it's like say they last a year or two, well, we can we can keep that information, you know, uh, there uh, for people uh, so they can find out what was once there. And also, um, uh, as people are taking the tours, you know, they get more context. Uh, if we give spots for the writers or the, sorry, the artists to talk about their work. Uh, explain and then give you know their bios and uh, maybe you know links to their instagram their website you know whatever uh, we also do uh, parks uh, parks and trails and nature um, you know trying to get more into biology tours we're working on um, a couple of these right now uh, you know ecology and geology and stuff and and also we have offline capabilities so that uh, you know people can download the app wherever and take the tour wherever um one cool one we did in hope um, british columbia uh, was um, a movie filming location one. That was where Rambo was filmed in uh, the 1980s. And so we took stills from the movie Rambo and reshot them from uh, the same angle. And people can kind of superimpose themselves into a Rambo uh, photo. Uh, uh, um, and then, of course, uh, driving tours uh, that can cover, you know, we basically we can cover, the, don't don't feel limited at all um, in the type of type of content that you want focused on. And we can help you either host it or create it for you. Um, yeah, so. And here I'll just give a, a quick app demo. Uh, so, so this is what you get when you open up the app. Um, it's a list of our, um, our cities sorted by distance from you, which the idea is we want to promote the smaller communities um, as well as the larger ones. Um, a lot of, so, you know, say, say most of our user base is concentrated where the people are. So um, that's big cities. So let's say um, around uh, Calgary, for instance, we have, I believe about you know, four or 5,000 users. Um, we also have a number of partner communities around Calgary so that those ones will show up right below the list. Uh, the same is true here as well. Uh, these two, Nanaimo and Jasper, were highlighted um, because uh, we had just, so we highlighted a couple of places where we've just launched new content as well. So anyway, so you can you can scroll down the list. Uh, see, see, see how it shows how far away you are from uh, where it is. Uh, we have like a then and now photo uh, for each one. Um, and yeah, it's kind of a big list, uh, as you can see. So, <laughs> and then there's a map, a tab at the bottom as well. And so, and so it goes, yeah, and then we, we kind of, we're, we're working on, we, we have filters. So we have one of these regional tours right now. So this one, it doesn't neatly fit into a single community type of um, uh, place. So, so it's, um, uh, it's a driving tour that connects eight different communities. And I'll talk a bit more about that one later on. Um, as you can see, Banff um, was part of our, um, uh, our internment project. And this is uh, the internment project was our biggest project uh, to date by far. Um, and as you can see, um, so that was focused on Canada's first World War internment camps. 
Um, and it was an enormous undertaking. Um, and I guess, I, I don't know, I guess my, my proudest achievement as a, as a content developer. But as you can see, uh, in the First World War, Canada set up a, um, a brutal series of internment camps, uh, primarily for people of Ukrainian origin. Um, it was, it was, um, uh, it's a very shocking and unjust story, um, uh, one of the kind of a dark chapter in Canadian history. Um, and one of the, and basically, and in, in so anyway, when you go, so this is, this is the tour I wrote. Um, uh, so you can start, so start one. Here's the so it's located at the Caven Basin National Historic Site. Um, that was where um, the camp was located. So you can you know here's the map. You can move around uh, between different stops, uh, and and then when you go to each stop, that's where a you know there's that's mapped. Each stop is mapped out to where a photographer was standing when they took a historic photo. And I've gone to the same spot. So as you can see with this one, you know, I think I did a big job lining up the, the mountain pretty nice. Um, this is like the best, it's kind of an odd small site for a tour. Um, and also they built the camp on the just on the side of this extremely steep hill right above a swamp. Uh, very odd place to build a camp. But um, uh, so, so um, as six, oh, winter, and, sorry. And there's audio. Now for this one, I recorded the audio. You see there's an audio player at the bottom here. So. In this picture, taken from the same set of foot. So as you can see, um, uh, you can record your own audio. Um, uh, your narrator, if, if you do. Uh, we also have other people who can do narration as well. Um, and then, of course, we also record it in French. Uh, so it's all available in French. Uh, we had uh, Joni. She's our very talented um, uh, Quebec-based uh, translator. Sur cette photo, les gardes échangent des boules de neige avec des prisonniers à l'intérieur de la. No, it's a very seamless, very seamless experience to switch between the two. Um, now that we are expanding to the States, I'm wondering if we should get rid of the, the Union Jack as well. I like the idea of flags for the translation symbols, but uh, it it's, needs a bit of some questions, <laughs> I guess, uh, political sensibilities. Anyway, as you can see, as we go through, uh, you can go to the nearby list. So we, we we take a lot more photos than we need in any, you know, generally wherever we can in any given community so that there's a lot more people can walk around. They can scroll down this list and see all the then and now photos we created. And they can also come back into the neighborhood uh, or they can walk around their neighborhood rather and see what is around them. And the idea here being we want people just to keep coming back to the app um, for different, you know, and just be exploring it. Um, so as you can see, these are all these uh, light um, kind of teal ones are ones that are, we call them, uh, they're just uh, uh, then and now photo spots. They're just spots <laughs> rather than tour stops. Um, and so you can go to each one. We have a short short write up, you know, just explaining what is each image. Uh, we credit them all, of course. Um, uh, and uh, and yeah, no, I mean, I think I think we're, we're really good at lining up these then and now photos. It's uh, something I'm uh, quite passionate about. Um, and let's see. What else are we looking at here? And then, so another thing, one other thing I just want to show you is, uh, so in Nanaimo, um, our partner there, the Nanaimo Hospitality Association, um, Nor a wonderful partner, um, they have, um, um, you know, they want to promote all their local tourism businesses. So we've added all the a directory of all their local tourism businesses to the app as well. And that's featured alongside our then and now photo content. Um, and so that it's, you know, it's, it's non-intrusive advertising. It's like what, it's because it's all sorted by distance from the user. Um, uh, and so, so that people can, you know, stop at these businesses and stuff. And we can promote these uh, businesses, you know, within the app in, in multiple ways. Um, and yeah, um, once again, if anyone has any questions along the way, uh, don't hesitate to stop uh, and, and post them in the chat. <laughs> Just keeping an eye on it. Um, another really cool feature, one that I really love um, for obvious reasons, is um, we have this, you see this camera button here. Well, is that each more then and now photo stops? You can recreate your own then and now photo. So you press that button. Uh, this is, I just test one in Vancouver from a little while ago. Uh, brings up a historic photo uh, overlay and you can move it around. Um, it's very flexible, works really, it's very, it's very stable, uh, works really well. It's uh, so, you know, Chris did a phenomenal job designing. So line it up best you can. And it actually lined up really nicely. Take the photo. And it spits out a then and now photo version. And as you can see, this bank looks, uh, you know, lined up really nicely. And this is a uh, anti anti Vietnam War protest in the 1960s, I believe. Um, and so, so that's a really cool feature that uh, um, I I love to promote. Um, we want to add a an editor. Um, 
uh, there's a lot of development challenges because the it's, it's a for adding this editor an editor that would allow you to we well, see i guess behind me right <laughs> see it's a, one of these we call these crossfade images where you combine then and now and um uh, we want it so that people can finger draw and create their own and make those photos like the one where i'm in front of the burning hotel and you can superimpose yourself into historic photos um uh, another way another and i just think this is going to be an enormously um uh easy to imagine so many ways that that this can be uh become popular on social media i'm used to promote the app on social media and you can create scavenger hunts do it locally and also um you know we want to get people uh using the, the camera um uh, uh all the time uh, everyone's spent, spent enough time on social media uh, they've seen all the stuff there is to see but not that many people have created their own then and now photos uh, so easily on social media anyway so this is um the editor is uh it is we had it working a while ago um, but it is quite challenging. Um, the app development is different from website development. It's uh, very much a moving, um, uh, moving uh, goal. What's the term? Moving target. Sorry. And it has to be done for, for, in the case of you know done in parallel for Google and Android and and Apple. Uh, anyway, but uh, we'll, we're going to get it back up again. But um, uh, it's a, just also just the this sort of the 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 app development being a moving target is why. Uh, you know, if you have an app, uh, if you're going with another app, uh, it needs to be constantly worked on just to stay running in its current state. It's not like a website where you make it, you can throw it up and it'll go up. It'll stay up um, uh, with app development. Uh, you have to keep uh, 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 investing in development. And that's what we are doing and will always continue to do. Uh, we're not going anywhere. So that's just one, one consideration when the, considering whether to work with us. Video tours. Now, this is, um, uh, like I said, uh, you know, as you can easily imagine, uh, we have this in our app right now. It's, um, uh, this is a tour. We did the, the, say, uh, the sorry, the Sonemo tours in Nanaimo. And these are uh, based around uh, working with uh, the in Sonemo Knowledge Keeper and Elder Dave Baudele. And uh, this is probably one of my like favorite experiences of my career is, um, uh, but we were able to film him um, sharing their the knowledge of the cinema with us. And then we uh, worked in um, a bunch of uh, videos that we created of drone footage and stock footage. And, um, uh, and we're able to kind of cut these. With the, on the top of it is a killer whale um, called a Kalhanamitsen. And on the bottom is a, a, a beaver called a squillew. And uh, Beaver means that this was a working site because there used to be a longhouse right here. Um, but on the top of it, it has a story that connects to the waters right across here on Gabriel Island. Many years ago, we had what we called a transformer had come here. And anyway, so uh, this, uh, this version is a little low res. We create them in high res as well. But but the idea is we can do all all kinds of different content. Um, uh, we have a, a very good video editor on on. Uh, on our team now and so we're able to create uh, uh very effective uh videos and and effectively like we could we could stitch we, we've created basically in the past like recently of you know more or less full-length documentary style histories for one particular tour in blackfields alberta that did not lend itself to being a walking tour because it was you know focused on it was a more of a biography of a, of a, a, a one individual and so we just created for them a 40 minute documentary <laughs> and uh, cutting it with all kinds of different materials. And it was uh, turned out really nicely. So um, evolving projects. Um, so we, we've done many different kinds of projects. Uh, they, the number that we have done has kind of grown dramatically in, in their kind of complexity and scope. Um, and the number of our partners is um, uh, uh, very, uh, yeah, there's, a, there's an enormous number of them and they also are hard to categorize. So, you know, we started out with each project just being a city. Well, soon we found that, you know, we have, uh, say a number of cities that want to partner together under the aegis of a single organization. So in this case, this is visit South Okanagan. Uh, this is a big project we did where we partnered with 16 different heritage and tourism organizations spread across, um, eight different communities. Um, I guess this isn't all of them, but, um, um, and so, so we, you know, that was an enormous amount of uh, collaboration. We're very good at working with bringing all kinds of different organizations in the community together, um, and, and then working with them to advance all their goals. Um, so, and we also wanted to give a single, we, you know, they want, they don't want all their content spread across eight different cities, right? They want, um, uh, you know, within the kind of siloed off from each other within the app as well as the regional tour that is designed to connect all of them. So we've developed um, uh, regional pages. So we started out by calling them regional because 
this was a regional project, however. Um, and so we, we give a single clearinghouse for each uh, for this project. Um, uh, but then we kept getting more projects that don't fit in neatly into the regional categorization. Um, I guess I'm a bit of a stifler for uh, terminology and precise wording. Uh, so, so we had another project that was a themed project. Now this was a massive one, um, uh, and and uh, this is a massive project, our, our biggest that we've ever done. Um, for um, that I mentioned already on Canada's first World War internment camps. The camps were located from you know Nanaimo to uh, Halifax, um, and so uh, not exactly a region. Um, uh, uh, and so what we did was. Uh, we combine them all into now we have a themed project page. We also have one that is like, you know, a, a, say a, a, a regional project that follows a theme. Uh, this is Southwest Ontario's Black History, um, a major project we're doing with a number of different uh, heritage and tourism organizations, uh, uh, well, actually mostly heritage um, uh, in uh, four counties in Southwest, well, five counties, I guess, actually, in Southwest Ontario. Um, and this includes, you know, um, driving tours, uh, connecting all these different museum her, um, uh, sites of significance along the Underground Railroad. And so um, and that's a really cool project. Actually, it is uh, Black History Month right now, and they just um, did the official kind of launch um, just this Sunday, and apparently it went off really well <laughs> in, uh, that, in Ontario. Um, another kind of level of complexity that we have um, that has come in is a uh, sub-city project. So uh, this is not to say it's a, a less than the Toronto Railway Museum project. But what it is, is that we have multiple partners in a single city and we want, and the, those multiple partners have multiple different kinds of content that we have developed for them that are spread all around the community. So they want to be able to access that content in a single place. Uh, so we've, we've, so this, you know, we've made for them a virtual tour with audio guides, uh, hands-free museum with audio guides, um, story locations. Story locations are like long, they're, they're like tour stops. So it's like a long write-up um, that's affixed to a landmark. Um, so it's more than just a single then and now photo, but it's it's a point of interest that we're trying to drive people towards, but it's not a full walking tour. It's just a single spot. Um, as you can see, we have, have to develop a lot of terminology for all these things. Um, so the so we wanted to build a single clearinghouse for them. So so now we have um, you know Toronto Railway Museum project page, and so we're just actually implementing this right now, where each of our partners across um, uh, Canada and the United States and, and Europe now um, uh, will get their own project page. And that's like a single place where they can access all their materials uh, that we've created for them. Um, a lot of our partners, you know, they come back to us year after year after year. They see they see what kind of content we've created, you know, say they start out with a, a walking tour and then the next year they want to add audio. The next year after that, they want to add another tour, you know, oh, hey, we have another project that we want to focus on. And um, it's like a project process that um, has worked out really well. So for them, but this is all just to say that we can do all kinds of different, we have just enormous flexibility. So uh, bringing in different communities, bringing in all kinds of different themes of content, all kinds of different content, um, we have experience doing all of it. Another thing we're doing is white label apps. Um, we're just building, we're just about to launch our first one right now, the Explore Nanaimo apps. Now this is just, we make you your own app. It's a spin-off of the on the spot app. So it's like a base level of the on the spot app, except with only all the content that you have in yours uh, or that, that you've developed as part of your project. So that's like, it's like your own project page, basically. Um, we can host and maintain the app for you. And it has the same functionality as our app. Um, and also we will continue to update it um, as we add new features to uh, the on the spot app. I think a lot of people want their own apps. Um, for obvious reasons. I mean, it makes a lot of sense uh, to want your own app. However, it's like we always found that it's very difficult um, to get people to download an app. Um, and so, you know, I think a lot of uh, a lot of projects where communities will, you know, have, bring in like a, a developer to develop like a tourism based app for them. It's their own community app. And then, um, uh, you know, you get like you launch it, you promote it, you know, you get some news about it, um, you know, you might get a. Uh, uh, 50, 100, you know, maybe 500 downloads or something. And then within a year, it's just, you know, people don't keep these kinds of apps on their phones too much unless there's uh, stuff to keep coming back to. Um, so then it kind of just dies out and then the whole kind of effort fizzles out. And and uh, yeah, but, but our app, because we're always constantly adding new cities, new content and everything, we kind of want to become the go-to history tourism app for uh, Canada and then more so um, uh, in other countries as we're, as we're expanding. So, so um Anyway, if you do want your own app uh, alongside, and this still means all the content will still be in our app, um, uh, but we can put it also in your own app and run that for you. Another thing is uh, we have we can uh, paywall the tours. So say if you want to 
in your in your app if say people want to take a walking tour you can charge say seven nine dollars or something like that uh, however much up to you or you can even at the end of the tour put in like a tip your tour guide button and um and then we share that revenue with you um we'll sign like a separate sharing revenue sharing agreement with you on that um and that's something we're we're, we're looking to to trial um uh with with a white label app soon um if you want to say if you if you're offering walking tours in your community um but you know that you're not physically available to prevent provide them 24 7. well um this is a great way for you to continue deriving revenue from an experience that you know is obviously not the same as a as a, as a guided walking tour but it has the then and now photo aspect of it it can have a video of, you know all kinds of different av um it can complement a a uh, uh your your existing walking tours uh, rather than just some substitute them um flexible partnerships so this is how partnering with us works um that's why this Basically, as I said, we're a small uh, company, very agile, and very um, have have learned to be extremely flexible in the way we work with many different partners. Some of them, uh, you know, they all have different, um, say, sizes. They have different goals. Um, uh, as I as I said before at the beginning, you know, we're able to. Uh, we have the four different types of partners generally. You know, heritage, tourism, government and uh, business, uh, they all have kind of slightly different goals. I mean, it is it is very convenient for us that <laughs> promoting history and, and these other kind of getting people walking around these walking tours happens to promote everybody's interests, but they oftentimes times have specific concerns, specific things they'd like focused on. Um, and so we are, we have a lot of experience working with, you know, over a hundred partners across Canada. Um, we also aim for, consistent quality for communities of every size. So this is to say that um, uh, our smaller communities, we want them to feel like we are giving every every piece of, well, as much elbow grease and, and TLC uh, to, their, to developing their content and, and promoting it as well as we are to our larger partners, our major ones, you know. Um, we want, and then for the users, we want them to feel like anywhere that they open the app in Canada, uh, or uh, in the United States or wherever, um, uh, wherever they open the app, whatever community they go to, they know they're going to get a very high quality experience. Uh, we want to make it uniformly high quality. And so that's why we focus so heavily on making it um, um, effectively for, for, for the smallest communities around the Gleeshan population 300 to ones like uh, Toronto or, you know, say we, we lost some content in Washington, D.C. or London. Um, you know, whatever the size, we are aiming for a consistently high quality experience. Um, yes, yeah, so once again, we can create a content or we can host yours. So generally, um, uh, uh, the, you know, this is like because content creation is like our, a, a major part of our um, uh, expenses and stuff, uh, you know, or the costs involved. Um, if you just have your own content, you want to develop yours, we can host it for you. And that's a much more uh, budget friendly way if you're working on a tight budget. Um, you know, we can just start out with that and then build on that as well. Um, uh, if you want us to, we call those submitted content packages. Um, and, um, and yeah, so afterwards, uh, if anyone has, has any questions about specific pricing, I can definitely get into that as well. But basically as far as budget goes, like, yeah, we, we kind of, we had just have a fairly, bes we make a, for each of our partners, we make a bespoke budget. That one is, uh, that we kind of figure out what your budget is, what you, what your goals are. And here, and then we put together a proposal that is here's, here's, Here's here's how we can fulfill those needs and in the most effective way and and make sure that uh, you can get on the app. We can build the content we want for you or that you want. Um, and and also it's within your budget and within your means. And then um, uh, that way uh, we yeah, we just have enormous flexibility, as I like to say. So I uh, don't hesitate to, you know, is, uh, I just like to emphasize that not to be a, a sticking point, basically. Um, another thing is, um, I guess I, I should add about our, our set of ethical standards of public history um, uh, is we are, yeah, we take the content, the quality of the content very seriously. We also take our role as public historians very seriously. Our ethical guidelines have been um, uh, uh, sorry, um, approved, I guess, or, or yeah, like um, uh, and commended by um, a number of our historical advisors, um, professors at the University of Victoria. Um, uh, we are able to you know, make sure that uh, everything is uh, up to the latest standards of historiography and quality and is and will, you know, we remain. Yeah. Um, oh, OK. Yeah, I guess. And I'll just add a bit about uh, we do analytics reports for you. Um, we are very good at getting press. 
whenever we launch a project because you know it's, it's easy to uh, it's a good news story for people and it's easy to uh, you know say whenever we launch walking tours in the community people uh people love that you know it's uh it's something that the news loves to cover to put to cover and we create all this art you know for each project launch generally and so we're able to uh the news news outlets love to run then and now photos uh it's a very effective way to get um all kinds of different content um tv radio well I mean, I guess it doesn't work so well for radio. Well, we do get a lot of radio stories, um, uh, newspapers, and and um, and just online outlets. Uh, so so that's a really great way to do it. Uh, we we also for our partners, you know, we can create a post template, some social media post templates for you, so that it's kind of very um, straightforward to post materials once you um, are are once we've launched and so that you can keep promoting it and we will cross promote it with you um for our digital advertising campaigns once again people just love the then and now photos doing like you know because the fact that we create all this content all this art um uh, means our click through rates so this is you know the cost per click um i think it's fairly self-explanatory uh, for advertising is um uh, a mere fraction of uh the industry average and um there's uh it's hard to beat uh kind of uh, the level of interest we get because it doesn't really look like advertising it's like kind of stuff that people like basically and even people that's um uh, so as you can see here i just include this one you know it's 500 reactions 200 comments been shared 300 times you know this is just we're able to get people to share our stuff because all of our web our urls are designed to be uh you know get uh, to to get people excited and and sharing the materials um, and uh, and then yeah, we design marketing materials. We can do QR codes. Uh, we have partners who put billboards up uh, promoting our stuff. Um, we do graphic design for them. Uh, we have partners uh, that yeah, or, or just road signs right now. Um, I have to um, put one of those together for a client uh, uh, right after this. And um, and yeah, so that's all different kinds of content. Um, I see there's a couple more questions here. I'll just get to the end here and then get to those. <clears throat> oh, and analytics also, uh, just as I mentioned before, we can provide analytics reports and we have very fine grained analytics. Uh, we can provide you maps showing where people walked when they took, we were using the app, what page they were on. Um, uh, and uh, it's very good for helping promote that, proving, demonstrating that people are using the app and, uh, and uh, liking it. So um, as you can see here, uh, these are some of our partners um, uh, that have been very happy with us. Uh, so, you know, we're able to get a lot of attention. Um, uh, it gives exposure all over the world. That's because, you know, we uh, all of our content's available on the website and and um, and also and um, on the app is available anywhere in the world. It's not region locked. And uh, also our app is has, has coverage in 120 communities, even though all those all those People in all those communities are can see quickly, very quickly access our materials. Um, uh, the, once again, yeah. So uh, this is a cool one. Is uh, uh, Rhonda said our, it's the, the app has been embraced by our senior population. Um, yeah, it's uh, we uh, like so that's some, definitely something, especially in a lot of these um, uh, smaller communities uh, that we like to promote is um, uh, you know working with senior like seniors. Um, uh, okay, you know, a lot of our uh, projects are funded by. Uh, uh, grants that are, you know, uh, aimed at that uh, particular definite demographic, and it's a great way to um, give them some, you know, get them out and about walking around, or just, you know, reminiscing about their youth. I mean, if you look at it on on our uh, social media and all the comments and people, you know, reminiscing about this or that particular place that we have that enough photo of. Um, also, yeah, the um, uh, uh, the youth are very into it. Um, so, like with that camera we have, you know, we have like a bunch of uh, young people in uh, Vancouver who go out, um, you know, high school kids, and take their own then and now photos and share them on social media. Um, it's a great way, you know, these and these are kids that are like, wow, I'm really into history now, <laughs> or well, more so than I was, and like sharing it with each other. And it's just a uh, a, a great way to um, include it. Um, uh, also, local educators utilize the app as part of their curriculum. This is true at both the well at the Primary, secondary, and post-secondary levels, our app has been included, and our tours that we've developed have been included as part of the curriculum. And grade two, and especially in Alberta, in grade two, they teach you know local town history. We have a number of uh, uh, smaller communities that we cover in Alberta, and so in grade two, they take you know they get kids with the iPads and they they lead them around and show them that enough photos, let them play with the camera. Uh, kids love it. It's a great way, you know, to help them understand what their community was once like. Um, also, you know, in um, uh, in Ontario, we have. Uh, a number of high schools that have incorporated our tours into, uh, you know, it was like homework that is part of their high school um, uh, curriculum. 
Um, and then it's been the basis of, uh, you know, public history courses at uh, UBC and UVic as well as um, uh, where, I don't know, I go and lecture sometimes. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, anyway, so that's, uh, you know, so all of this, um, all of this is uh, our testimonies. We have more, but that's a good one. So that, um, I was running a little bit over, but I hope that was, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I see, well, I was able to retain everybody until the end, so that was great. Um, okay, and uh, so it was, um, uh, I, thank you very much for taking the time. And uh, yeah, here, I'll just answer some questions now.